Today, I want to raise a part of this bill which, though has been mentioned, has never been considered in light of what I am about to say. The proposed legislation will put a maximum 10-year sentence in place for those people that damage or attack statues, asserting into British law a significantly higher penalty for attacking a statue, which begs the question why. Why will a person be given a much more significant penalty for attacking a stone or an iron statue compared to if they were to damage a stone wall or an iron gate, especially because in their physical form they are identical, neither are alive, can't be injured or have their feelings hurt and are made of the same elements, yet for one there is much more of a significance. I simply ask why. It is because we recognise that statues symbolise the historical, cultural and social feelings of our nation, and thus protecting feelings linked to such sensitivities is essential to preserve civil order. It is because, as the Justice Secretary told the Commons, this bill ensures our courts have sufficient sentencing powers to punish the emotional harm caused by this type of offending. Yes, you can go out and debate, discuss, disagree and even respectfully, vehemently oppose any historical figure, but when someone defames or vandalises statues of people like Winston Churchill in a mob-like fashion who means so much to millions of Britons who hold his efforts during the Second World War so close to their hearts, then that does threaten the cohesive nature of our nation. We cannot pretend that a Western liberal democracy like Britain does not consider feelings when it comes to such situations, whilst at the same time today passing a law through Parliament giving such importance to protecting statues based upon commemorative feelings. As a Muslim, Madam Deputy Speaker, for me and millions of Muslims across this country and quarter of the world's population, that is Muslim too, with each day and at each breath, there is not a single thing in the world that we commemorate and honour more than our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But when bigots and racists defame, slander or abuse our Prophet, peace be upon him, just like some people do the likes of Churchill, the emotional harm caused upon our hearts is unbearable. Because for two billion Muslims, he is the leader we commemorate in our hearts, honour in our lives and forms the basis of our identity and our very existence. In fact, the noted playwright John Bernard, George Bernard Shaw said about the Prophet, peace be upon him, he was by far the most remarkable man that ever set foot on this earth. He preached a religion, founded a state, laid down a moral code, initiated numerous social and political reforms, established a powerful and dynam dynamic society to practice and represent his teachings, and completely revolutionised the world of human thought and behaviour for all times to come. In, to those who say it's just a cartoon, I, want to say, I won't say it's only a statue, because I understand the strength of British feeling when it comes to our history, our culture and our identity. It's not just a cartoon, and they're not just statues. They represent, symbolise and mean so much more to us as human beings. To conclude, whilst this law will now protect civil order and emotional harm when it comes to secular and political figures such as Oliver Cromwell and Churchill, and does not necessarily for other figures that many people in modern Britain hold close to their hearts, such as Jesus, the, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Moses, Ram, Buddha, Guru Nanak and many others, it does show that we recognise there is such a thing as emotional harm. And finally, we must ask ourselves, when striking the careful balance to protect such emotional harms, can there and should there be a hierarchy of sentiments? Thank you.